Welcome to the Free Dive Cafe, episode 6 with Alejandro Lemus. My name is Donnie. I'm the host of the Free Dive Cafe. The Free Dive Cafe is long form interviews that get into the backstories, the training, the challenges, the passions and fears, and personal philosophies of those who choose to adventure on one breath. The Free Dive Cafe can be found at freedivecafe.com. You can listen to the podcast there or through iTunes and the Stitcher app. I think it's also available on Google Play Podcasts now. Like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash freedivecafe podcast and share with your freediving friends. And as always, if you have any comments or suggestions, go to the website and leave a message through the contact page. So first of all, thanks to everyone who has been sending messages and getting some really nice feedback and it means a lot to me. Okay, let's do the Patreon thing. If you love the podcast and want to see it grow and improve, then you can throw a few dollars my way through the Patreon page even $1 a month would be hugely appreciated. Go to freedivecafe.com and hit the support the podcast button. That's how you do it. There are four patrons now. It doesn't sound like much, but to me it means a lot. Thank you so much for your support. On today's episode, we have Alejandro Lemus. Alejandro is the Mexican freediving national champion in all the disciplines in the pool and in depth. He was born in Mexico City when he was a child. His father gave him the books of Jacques Cousteau to read and his fascination with the underwater world continues to this day. He's a hydrobiologist and started out diving in scuba initially, but when he discovered freediving 13 years ago, he instantly knew his mission in life. He starts each day thinking of new projects to help grow the sport and the community that he loves. Alejandro has a big dive school in Mexico that teaches, organizes trips, trainings, and competitions. There are just a few people in the world that have all the records in each discipline in his own country. Alejandro is one of them. And he's one of the select group of people to dive below 100 meters in constant weight. He also has two continental records, a static record with CMS, and a free immersion record with IDA. He is an instructor trainer with IDA, CMAS, PADI, and he collaborates with the development of the PADI freediving program. So it's safe to say that Alejandro is no slouch. He's also a lovely guy, and we had a really nice conversation. I stupidly forgot to turn on my microphone for this one, but luckily my laptop mic picked me up, and we didn't lose the interview, thank God. Okay, so heads up for the next episodes. The wonderful Sarah Campbell and I had a really fun conversation. That's coming later in the week. JP Francois, head of IDA Education and one of my own teachers, will appear at the beginning of September. And Stefan Randig, co-founder of Freedive Pang Lao in the Philippines sometime in mid-September. Okay, guys, let's dive. So Alejandro, thank you so much for coming on the show. So I'd like to start by, um, yeah, so you live in Mexico City right now, is that correct? Yes, it's correct. Yeah. Mexico Mexico City is pretty far from the sea, right? So do you uh, do you often get to train in the sea or do you just have the pool in Mexico City? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's uh, 40... Uh, sorry, 400 uh, kilometers to the near coast. Yeah, that's quite far. <laughs> Mexico City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's it's very easy to take up a flight uh, or drive to the coast and training in the in the sea. Yeah, but uh, I guess you mostly train in the pool then in Mexico City. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's my principal uh, training. Uh, okay. In the- okay. But I love the deep disciplines. Yeah, well, I mean, you're you're pretty good at all of them. So 
I'm not surprised. <laughs> so, uh, Alejandro, can you please just um, just tell us a little bit about your early life, um, where you come from, how you grew up, and how you discovered free diving? Yes, um, I'm from Mexico City. Uh, <laughs> now I live in Mexico City, but uh, I discovered the free diving in the um, 15 years ago. Uh, when I trained scuba diving in the university was my first experience uh, when uh, I take the my course uh, dive master course uh, of scuba diving. Uh, I take the my first course with uh, all agency. Uh, I don't know. Um, do you remember all agency from a Cuban guy, a very famous Cuban guy, uh, Pipin Ferreras? Pipin Ferreras, yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, so he was your first uh, free diving instructor or scuba instructor? Uh, free diving instructor. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, was my first course uh, 15 years ago. Was my first experience in... Uh, free diving courses or practice and and then uh, I discovered the other possibilities with uh, CMAS and AIDA two or three months uh, after yeah because Pippin had his own school right he had his own organization yeah 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 um, so you did your first course with uh, Pippin Federas uh, Pippin was quite a, um, or Pippin is quite a, uh, a well-known character. Um, did you enjoy your first course? Did you, uh, did you learn a lot from it? Was it a good experience yeah. for you? Yeah, yeah, yes, but, but, um, huh, I don't agree with this, uh, system, uh, all system, no, now, uh, but for my first experience was good. Many, many mistakes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, you know. When you started free diving, was there anything that you found very difficult? What did you find the most difficult thing about uh, free diving when you started? Uh, the most difficult was uh, train my body for uh, dynamic apnea. For me, it was uh, really difficult. No, in the static. My first static was five minutes. <laughs> and my first constant weight was uh, 32 meters. But my first dynamic apnea was terrible. <laughs> Can you remember uh, how, how far you did in your first dynamic? Uh, 50 meters. Uh, I, yeah, just, I, I know it's a good uh, distance, but uh, um, the difference between the performance, the difference between my static and my constant weight, uh, my dynamic apnea was terrible. <laughs> That's really interesting because, um, you know, I, that your first static was five minutes. Um, and your dynamic was relatively so short because my first, my first static, uh, was, I think three minutes, but I think on the same day, I also did 75 meters dynamic was my first dynamic. Um, and I still have a really bad uh, static, but I just did 120 meters dynamics. So it's interesting how individual it is for people. Yeah, yeah. So, what what was it that was? Uh, what did you find so difficult about dynamic? Was it the just a horrible experience? I can put my focus or my concentration is very poor in in the pool. For I don't know why, and actually, <laughs> my my performance in dynamic. Uh, apnea is 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 good at at, at two hundred uh, 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 
a little more meters. Um, but my concentration, I can, I don't know, I can, because I can put my focus on relaxation, um, no, it's good. I, I don't know why. Yeah, I, I had one person say to me, um, he, he also had a lot of trouble with uh, dynamic, and he said that it was because it's so easy to come up, right? It's um, when it starts to get difficult, um, the surface is only a few inches away, so he can't resist uh, coming up. Did you have the same problem? Yeah, yeah, more or less, more or less. But I, I don't know why. But in the past uh, and now, actually, <laughs> it's the same problem. Um, now, now uh, I have a, a good dynamic, but uh, um, the difference is uh, um, huge between my concentration for depth disciplines or for static. And in, in, in my performance in, in constant weight, uh, sorry, in dynamic is my concentration is uh, is horrible. I don't know. <laughs> so if you could uh, improve your concentration, then you could do so much better. Yes, I don't know why. Because um, um, my best experience for uh, deep dives was when I did 98 meters in free immersion with at uh, that time almost, almost five minutes. But was for me a magical experience. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, na, uh, narcosis or uh, hypoxic, or I don't know why, but in my mind, uh, I, I have. Um, uh, um, <laughs> a very good trip <laughs> in my mind. Yeah, for for me it was the same. My deepest dive was also my my most relaxed dive, actually, and most peaceful dive. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what what is your favorite discipline now then? Um, free motion, free okay. motion, first and second, constant weight. Uh, the last maybe constant. Perdón, sorry. Uh, dynamic, no fins. I love it. Dynamic, no fins. No fins, but with fins, it's horrible for me. I don't know why. <laughs> I hate constant weight, no fins. I don't know why. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's very interesting how how we have these individual likes and dislikes with the disciplines. Um I really, I'm not such a great fan of constant weight, but without fins, I really love it. Um, and uh, yeah, I quite like dynamic in the pool too, but without fins, I can't do anything. I just feel like I, I don't even move in the water. <laughs> so what is it about, um, why do you like free immersion so much? I mean, you're, you're very, you're, you're very good in all the disciplines. You have the national records for everything in your country. Um, but what is it about free immersion that you like so much? Um, uh, I can put my mental focus in total relax, and, and I really enjoy the 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 depth and the 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 trip. Um, and my sensation is uh, all time is okay, is perfect, and I feel uh, the freedom, and I feel exactly and very good uh, the the water and my and the environment. I, I, for me, it's a mental trip. Right. So for you, the free immersion is the easiest way for you to have a good uh, mental experience and relax completely and enjoy the dive in the best way. Yes, but my my best uh, dive 
was uh, Freemason experience, um, more or less 45 or I don't know, remember exactly, 45 or 50 meters uh, with uh, that time, five minutes and 30 seconds, almost six minutes. A nice, long, slow re-immersion. Slow, and slow, slow. So you said that when you first started, your uh, your static time was five minutes already. Um, what is your static time now? Uh, the official national record is 7.10. Which is your record, right? Yes, yes, yes. But uh, in training, my best time is eight minutes. How deep are your uh, your depth dives now? A uh, hundred four meter. A hundred four in constant weight. Yes, that's uh, pretty big. So <laughs> there's not many people in the world who are diving uh, beyond a hundred meters. Um, <laughs> you said that you you started free diving fifteen years ago. W- were you already very good at? depth diving when you started or was that something that took a long time for you to develop very slowly and very gradually uh yes was very slowly and step by step my right. my my depth improved no mm. so uh, for, was, was uh, very difficult the equalization technique uh, for past the 50 meters for me it's very difficult. Did you um, were you using the mouth fill already before you got to fifty meters, or did you just use a like a frenzel technique all the way to fifty? Uh, frenzel. Yeah. So you and you use the mouth fill now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So now for me, the quali- the technique, uh, the qualification technique is really, really easy. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I guess um, over so much time and diving so much, our bodies change and they adapt and um, these things get easier, right? Yes, uh, <laughs> I believe is uh, practice. The, the, yeah. the key is practice and practice and yeah. your body, uh, the, the answer of your body is uh, uh, feel easy. Is free diving popular in Mexico? Now, yes. Uh, 15 years ago no yeah <laughs> i think it's the same uh, i think it's the same in most places um 15 years ago yeah 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 because maybe i think uh, it's very popular in mexico because uh, we have um very good places for practice no so what are some of the best places to dive in Mexico? And, and which uh, locations are the best places? Uh, for In my personal opinion, for my experience, is in the cenotes. Right. Uh, See, I, the, I, I actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what a cenote is. Um, could you explain to, the, to me and to the listeners what the cenotes are? Yeah, mm, the cenote is um, underwater... River? Oh, like an underwater river. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. River. Uh-huh. Uh, with um, open parts like uh, lakes, mm-hmm. uh, in fresh water. Um, we have in Mexico, we have many, many holes. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a hole with water. Yeah. So you can um, access the, uh, the the hole is in the ground, and then you can go into the hole, and there is a pool with water there. Yes, correct. Um, we have many holes, many cenotes, with shallow cenotes or really really deep cenotes. Um, uh, and actually, uh, I train uh, in. A hundred plus a hundred meters of depth in the cenote near to Yucatan. Oh, really? It's, so they go that deep? Yeah, with a crystal clear 
water. Right. So 100 meters deep, more than 100 meters deep, crystal clear water. And are these um, are these cenotes? Can you find them all over Mexico, like in the center of the country, on on the coast, no. all over? No, no, no. In the southeast part only. Okay. So there's just one one area where you find yeah, them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but we have only three thousand cenotes, only. Oh, okay, so there's just three thousand uh, locations where you can find the cenotes. Yes, only. <laughs> well, I think three thousand should be enough for most people. <laughs> so you have um you have a really amazing uh, competition um record um. You hold all the national records for your country in all the disciplines. Um, so do you have a really big love for competition? Yes. Um, I love the pool disciplines and the depth disciplines. Um, I think a very looking, looking guy because uh, put... I put my attention and my target or objective in first in the pool disciplines. After and then depth disciplines. Uh, was um, really hard and difficult. <laughs> you know, uh, is put your mind and your body uh, in the extreme conditions, no, it's yes. easy. But I don't know why the reason, exactly reason, but I love the freediving. Um, for me, it's a, a passion. It's my, it's my life now. Uh, it's my hobby is my sport <laughs> so uh when you're uh training for free diving do you do other kinds of training like uh do you go to the gym do you do strength training do you do things like yoga um any kind of special training that you do to support your free diving yes 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 uh for me, it's very efficient train in high altitude in Mexico. We have uh, many mountains. And I use, um, do, do you know, a um, special uh, device uh, is for, the, the name of this device is uh, Altitude Training Mask. Right, it's a special mask that you can wear that simulates the high altitude. I'm plus climbing the mountain and running in the top of the mountain. For me, it's a perfect training for my CO2 uh, levels and O2 levels. <clears throat> and Obviously, I practice the yoga and um, specific the pranayama yoga. Um, I love it. Uh, and practice the uh, meditation, mental focus for me is a very important part. Uh, actually, uh, I believe that the free diving is 75% mental and 25% physical. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. So do you have like a daily uh, daily meditation time or do you just do the meditation before you train and before you dive or is meditation a bigger part of your life? No, no, just I uh, meditate um, um, when I practice the free diving. It's uh, it's easy for me. I don't know. Uh, put my mind in blank or in total relax. It's easy. 
special for example for the for me my uh, the discipline more easy is static apnea so it's uh yes obviously static apnea is a discipline where the more you can relax your minds and uh and 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 relax your every every part of your being then you can perform much better in that discipline okay <laughs> i confess <laughs> never train static apnea <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> but for me it's easy put my mind in blank and hold your breath right so if someone asks you to do a static you just uh take a breath and put your mind uh make your mind blank and that's it you go yes <laughs> I wish it was that easy for me. <laughs> so, um, do you think that you've made any, uh, because you're a, you're a world class, um, athlete at this point. Have you made any big mistakes with your training? Are there any things that you, you did that you wish you hadn't done when you were training? Yes, 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 yes. Um, in, in my first part of my career, I train through um, really, really strong the part of uh, the pure uh, um, free diving disciplines, and and I uh, forget uh, train my body with uh, um, hard exercise or. Um, uh, gym or so you you think it's uh you think it's very important to make sure that the body is strong and that you're training in other ways to support your free diving yes and and the other part is train your body for hold your breath many times no? many minutes or many meters or fits. So if you had to give some advice to beginning free divers or um or maybe not complete beginners but those free divers who are looking to move to the next level what what would be the best advice that you can give? Yes. <clears throat> uh, train first first train your body and then train your mind. Is for me is the the most important part. Train your mind, because when you train your body, is is really easy. For example, I don't know a, a guy, um, a sportman of uh, triathlon, for example, is yeah. a guy with a, <laughs> a very good physical condition. But your mind is not is no is a, a special training for uh, long dives or long deep dives. Uh, my advice is the most important part after your uh, training courses or uh, free diving courses is train your mind, train your body, but no uh, f a physical uh, exercise. This is this is this this part is easy. Uh, run, yeah. running and swimming and I don't know cycling. I don't know the 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 <clears throat> the difficult part is train your mind right it's, so maybe some people uh some people they focus too much on the physical condition and they think that if they if they just go to the gym and they lift weights and they go running in the mountains and they do yoga and they do all these uh these things that uh that's enough but um the mental part is a much bigger part yes correct i agree hmm. so when it when it comes to training the mind are there any specific exercises that you use that you think are very beneficial? Now, 
practice the some exercise from pranayama, for example, um, kapalabhati exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the in in my first part of my training, uh, I try to start with pranayama exercise, and I use the technical of uh, I don't know the exactly uh, word in English. Uh, the 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 word in Spanish is uh, uh, no yes 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 it is visualization technique okay. yes visualization yes yeah 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 is for me is very very efficient I start my training with visualization and. Uh, and exercise pranayama exercise and then start my training in the water right so when you say that you um you practice visualization do you mean that you actually visualize your dive visualize how you are going to perform the diving yes of course um uh, so you see yourself uh go into the water you see yourself take the last breath you see yourself like moving down the the line, turning at the bottom, and this kind of thing. Yes, I visually say all my diving, all my dive. Um, the the first part um, in me in my visualization, um, put my my wetsuit and uh, walk to the uh, beach or uh, boat and take my breathing and take my first uh, dives for warm up and make the deep dive all first in dry in my visualization uh, when you're warming up for a dive do you practice uh do you use FRC or some kind of exhale uh, dive yes, yes, as your yes, warm-up? Yes, 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 yes. Two or three dives with empty lungs. So I wonder, have you ever had like uh, any kind of scary accidents or an, a bad injury when you've been free diving? No, no, never. You've never had a lung squeeze, a trachea squeeze, anything like nope. that? Nope. Nope. <laughs> so 15 years of free diving, diving to more than 100 meters, and you've never had this kind of injury. Yeah, I think that's really, uh, it's important for people to hear that because it seems that uh, every day I'm hearing about somebody who's having a squeeze. No. No. Yes, yes, yes. No. Uh, obviously, I don't know. This is a, a common situation, but me, in my personal experience, I had several <laughs> blackouts for <laughs> my fall. <you> know? <laughs> but never long squeeze or tracky squeeze or whatever. Well, that's really that's really great, and I think that's important for other divers to hear that uh, it's not. Um, it shouldn't be a normal part of free diving that these things happen. I hope some people can take that on board. But uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, advice. Yes, I believe to uh, avoid the long squeeze. The the key is train your um, long stretching. This is the key. Easy enough. Uh, force your <laughs> your body <laughs> uh, and the uh, adaptation is step by step no mm -hmm. now i <laughs> yesterday for example yesterday i did <laughs> 20 meters and tomorrow 40 meters is this is crazy yes yeah like making too big a uh, jump yeah this is this is the reason because now is very common 
in the with the free divers uh, in the base uh, in the long squeeze no yeah the long squeeze is very common now i i i, I read uh, uh, many um, posts in the social media uh, with uh, experience the new free divers with long squeeze yeah yeah me too and you know i was also talking to one friend of mine he was um he was doing his instructor course at one place in uh in the philippines and um he mentioned that several uh several people who he was doing the course with had actually experienced squeezes and i think they were only diving to around 40 meters uh which i think is quite it's a bit crazy that um this is happening I think it's uh, the problem is that when you start free falling, um, because you're when you're free falling, you don't really have to do anything. So it's it can be if you can equalize easily, then it's tempting just to let yourself uh, free fall for another ten meters and then another ten meters, and then um, <laughs> that's where the problem happens. Very common mistake. Yeah. And the other problem as well is that divers are trying too hard to reach a certain depth if you need to dive to 40 meters to complete your ida instructor course but yes. you're only really able to dive to 35 meters comfortably and then you keep pushing yourself pushing yourself every time that you dive to go the extra five meters then this is where the problems happen right yeah yeah right yeah, yeah. i agree have you have you seen any uh bad accidents with other people like have you seen any injuries in the water while you've been at a competition or just in training yes 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 i was in vertical blue in with you remember the accident from um the um ah, uh, nick nick mavoli yeah. Right. yeah 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 so that was 2013 and uh, yeah. and you were at the competition when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, after your dive, the the next performance is is me. But at, at that time, um, if you dived uh, after Nick had his accident, did you did you know already that Nick had died? No, I believe the <laughs> the problem the problem was. Uh, Put your body in the limit. Yeah, too many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was the principal mistake. What is the when it comes to safety? What is the biggest piece of advice that you can give to free divers? <laughs> Dive into the, your limits and your progress of your performance. Really, really, really is is true. Really important step by step right so just dive inside your limits and don't push outside your limits yes yeah, yeah I, I think it's it's so difficult in free diving because if i go running on the mountain today um i can i can start to run faster and faster and faster and i can start to push harder and harder and harder it's not really going to hurt me you know, maybe I'm going to be very tired. Maybe I'm going to, uh, if I if I do something too quickly, I could hurt my foot or my leg, but it's not really so serious. But in free diving, any situation where you push too hard is potentially very serious. And it's hard for people to remember that, I think. Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree with you because <laughs> uh, hypoxic, CO2, <laughs> and your heart rate high, put your mind with uh, stress and limit the stress and your body, obviously. I believe it's a good idea. <laughs> put your body, or push your limit uh, um, <clears throat> many times in a short time, no, it's healthy, no? Yeah, so free divers have to remember to... Uh be gentle towards themselves and to respect their bodies as much as possible. Many times uh, I for, <laughs> forget the principal reason, no? 
the, for yeah. me, the principal reason is enjoy, no? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, the, the deepest dive that I did was also the, for me, the most enjoyable dive, the most peaceful dive, the most relaxed dive and the best experience that I had. And uh, I think that, you know, it, it made me realize that actually the best way to progress is to make sure that every dive is like that. If you if you don't enjoy a dive, then just come back up and wait for the next time and progress like that. Sometimes, see, yes, 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 yeah. But the the true sometimes we forget the principal target, no? Yeah, yeah, it's very easy to forget. Yeah. So you have a you have a school in Mexico for free diving, Alejandro. Yes, right. Is that in Mexico City or is that on the on the coast somewhere? In the Mexico City and the coast. Right. So you have um, you have shops in two places. So yes. You're teaching. Um, is, is it very busy? Is there a big demand for free diving courses? For me, for my school now, yes. I I I I have a special very busy. Is that mostly Mexicans or is it mostly people coming from other countries? So so. So a little bit of both. Yeah yeah yeah. 50% more or less, and 50%. You're an instructor trainer with Ida, CMAS, and Patty. Yes. What What do you find is, um, which organization do most people do their certifications with? Now, Ida, and in the second place, Patty. Yeah, I think that Patty is really um, developing very fast as a freediving organization, right? Yes, I um, I believe this is a very good option when you are a scuba diver. You know the system, and the paddy free diver system is obviously more or less uh, the same system. It's a good system. It's uh, good information and uh, and very good standards and safe standards. So let's talk about your um, your gear, Alejandro. Which kind of uh, wetsuits and fins and masks do you like to use and that kind of thing? Yes, my, uh, I use the principal brand. I have a sponsor. My, my sponsor is Crazy. Uh, I use uh, the mask and fins for teaching or for recreational free diving I use the uh, carbon blades for crazy right I use the nano uh, mask and yeah. snorkel and I use the right so crazy makes pretty much everything so pretty much everything that you wear is by crazy since it, since it's your sponsor yeah 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 uh, but for competition I use uh, other brands. I use the Monofin, the Molcha Knobs Monofin. Yeah, I hear it's very good. Yeah, yeah really. I use the Mono, uh, the Monofin, uh, Molcha Monofin for uh, constant weight uh, because for uh, dynamic apnea, I use uh, uh, waterway fins. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's better. And when you dive deep, do you um, like to, do you wear a mask when you dive deep, or do you just wear a nose clip? And do you use fluid goggles too? Uh, just I use a uh, nose clip. Have you been to many places around the world diving? Are there any dive places, any dive sites that are special to to you that you like the most? Yes, uh, for me, for free diving, for. Uh, for competition free diving, the the best place in the world is the Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas. Yeah, I think everyone says that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for recreational free diving, it, it's a uh, a very difficult answer because <laughs> there exist many many places good, but my favorite is uh, the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, in the Caribbean, in Mexico and Cuba, uh, the Garden of Queens in Cuba is amazing place for free diving. Um, the hub, obviously, well, Red Sea, uh, Ocean in uh, Indonesia, 
near to near to Bali and and this area, no? Uh, and for me, the the best place for training free diving is here in Mexico. Where? Yes, yeah. Where? In the cenotes. Why? No problems with current, no problems with um, temperature, thermoclean, or uh, <laughs> bad weather, windy, or the uh, sunshine, sunshine, or doesn't matter. It's always is good. You really make me want to visit these uh, cenotes now and find out for myself. Yes. I'll have to come and visit you in Mexico, Alejandro, and, uh, and see for myself. Sure. So uh, in the cenotes, is it, um, is it fresh water or salt water? Uh, fresh water. Fresh water for me is, uh, it's most difficult. Because you're less buoyant in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, uh, when, you take the bottom plate or take the tag and return. It's really, really hard start. Uh, but yes, anytime you are welcome. Okay, thank you. So I see that you studied um, hydrobiology at school. Yes. Um, so is is the life in the oceans and the ocean ecology something that you're very interested in? Yes. Yes, yes. What challenges do you see the oceans facing at the moment? Because I think there are a lot, a lot of big challenges right now. For me, in the the principal part is the conservation. It's a, a big problem, no? Yeah. A conservation, sure. the, the the environment, no? Many people in this world is uh, ignorant of the problems in the the ocean, no? The second part is grow the 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 sport the, the free diving sport because it's a uh, a really good sport and really good uh, recreational activity and very gently with the environment no yeah yeah it, the, the the impact on the environment is very small yeah and in the last part, my next challenge is broke my own limits uh, in depth limits or pool limits and expanding the the free diving in my country with a ecological massage. Right. So you're trying to... Uh... As you're teaching free diving and as you're promoting free diving, you're also trying to bring in some kind of ecological conservation message uh, at the same time. Yes, 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 yes. It was my profession now, no? In, in the university, I study the, the ecological and the environment and whatever. And now my, my job is teaching free diving for me is easy take the two parts and uh, show yeah and show of the people no? do you think that um how do you how do you think is the best way to reach the most people do you think that we need to change the uh have better education for people when they're younger yes i, I believe this is the key no this is the future i think um also what I've talked about before is that uh, many people, uh, especially in the countries where uh, pollution and problems with the ocean are biggest, um, those people are very poor. Um, and even if you educated them to do things differently, maybe they just don't have time. Maybe they're just, you know, they have other things to worry about. Um what do you think about that? Yes, uh, <laughs> the problem is huge, no? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when you are a free diver, uh, I understand very well the situation uh, sometimes, no? Um, it's more easy for us to explain 
and take care with the environment and take a part of uh, um, of the solution, no? And say uh, everything. Hey, the the problem is here, and uh, <laughs> we are the change, no? Yeah, I think uh, if you're free diving, and especially if you're a free diving instructor, then it's uh, it's pretty much your responsibility to do something to to educate the people that you teach about the best practices in the ocean. Yes. It, maybe it's only a small part, but at least it's something. And sometimes we have a ethical problem with spearfisher. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a big with a different opinions, no? So what what do you think about that personally? What's your opinion about spearfishing? When is a uh, responsible spearfishing? It's okay for me. Um, it's uh, naturally you can select the your food. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's the more pure uh, option for take your foods. All um, if you are responsible with the environment, no. So and so you mean that. If you're only spearfishing as a sport and the goal is just to catch as many big fish as possible, that's not uh, ethically I don't have... the best idea. No, for me, no, I don't agree. It's yeah, I mean, the, the way I see it is that um, I have no problem with spearfishing. If, if the person is going to catch the fish and eat the fish and that's... Uh, you know, that's done in a responsible way. I also think that maybe, you know, 50 or 100 years ago, um, I wouldn't have a problem with uh, spear fishing as a sport. But at this point, the damage to the oceans is so... Uh, we have so few large fish now that it seems irresponsible for someone to, to go in and take fish that they don't need. Yes, yes. But uh, many years ago, it was the only option, no? Right, yeah. Now we have other option or a more responsible option. Yeah, but that's... Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, personal opinions about that. I'm sure we'll hear about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I respect, but... And, I practice the spear fishing, but responsibly. Right. Yeah. No, in the marine park. No, in the private uh, species. This is okay for me. Alejandro, do you see, uh, do you see free diving as a, as a spiritual discipline for you? Uh, total. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When maybe when you start the free diving. No, it's impossible. You start the the, the situation. Uh, do you know the the first part the, the sport? Uh, and when you take a more experience and take uh, the natural part and take uh, experience and uh, mental experience. In, in this time is when you start a, a new sensation, a spiritual sensation. And I believe in, I, I don't have religion, no? But uh, I believe in, 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 in the environment, in the, if for me, God uh, means uh, the earth and the environment, no? Yeah, I think it's um free diving is uh an amazing way to to access a a spiritual part of your life for a lot of people who maybe they don't they're not interested in God, they don't have religion. Uh they're very disappointed with um just the material world around them. Uh but when you get in the water and you start to you're inside this completely natural environment and you have to work on a deep level with your mind, especially as you start to dive deeper. Um, it's an amazing opportunity to open up like a spiritual dimension in your life, right? Yes. 
we are not people super power people or supernatural people, no? <laughs> the free divers, we are a person with new point of view. Yeah, I agree. And I think that um when it also when it comes to protecting the ocean and ocean conservation, I think that when we spend so much time in the water as free divers, uh we become so aware of the ocean and the natural environment that we become very good representatives to share with the world why we should be protecting the ocean and looking after the life in it. Yes. When to be underwater uh, many times, you develop a special skill. What? Your point reference is change because we have other point of view and other skills and other conception, no? I'd like to ask you, Alejandro, do you have like um, any special ritual in the morning? Is there something that you do every morning when you wake up? Is it something like uh, maybe something like some yoga or meditation or is it just like having a coffee and reading? Do you have a ritual in the morning? No, nothing special. Nothing special, <laughs> just different every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just when... My day is a special day when, with a really, really deep dive. Uh, I start my concentration uh, one night ago. Right. So the night before, you already begin with your visualization and meditation. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I dream with my deep dive. And do you have a family as well? Do you have? A, are you married? Do you have kids? No, I'm okay. single. Oh, so um, you have uh, you're able to uh, dedicate your life fully just to your free diving. Now, yes, and um, but I'm a normal person. <laughs> I love read and I love uh, travel mm -hmm. and I love eat. <laughs> right. So talking about um, talking about eating, do you have like a special diet that you follow or? any kind of nutrition advice for freediving? Or do you just eat anything that you like? Only when I have a special competition or a special target, uh, I take a, a routine or I, uh, I take a, a special diet um, with um, a special recommendation with my nutriologist, no? Uh, with um, uh, a diet rich in in proteins and low in fat and rich in fruits and low in sugars um whatever no so in the preparation for like a, a competition or a big dive then you sort of really try to change your diet to make sure that it's much more healthy um but then the rest of the time you just you can eat what you like normal diet yeah so you said that you like to read do you have a favorite book or a favorite author that you would like to recommend to the listeners? Yes. Um, for me, a special book and very um, interesting uh, read for freediving is a book of uh, an Italian guy, uh, Federico Mana, um, equalization for free diving is the name. It's a, a very clear. It's a, a, a very good uh, experience. That's uh, equalization for free diving by Federico Mana. Mana. Okay. So I'll put links to that in the show notes, so anyone who's listening can uh, can click that link and find out some more information. Um, do you have any any books like? Uh, Books that are not related to free diving that you would like to recommend? Yes, yes, yes. The is for me it's a very good book. The name of book is the Leviathan 
of or the well. Oh, Le- Le- Leviathan? Yes, 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 yes. And the author is? Uh, Philip Harrow. So what is it about that book that you like the most? <laughs> Why uh, the author um, put uh, the, the comparison um, between wells with the humans. Okay, okay. Sounds interesting. It's, yeah, yeah, but it's incredible. So do you have any, um, just uh, for the last question, Alejandro, what are your plans for the future? Um, do you have any big dreams or, you know, what's your plans from day to day? Broke a world record. <laughs> uh-huh, okay. <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know why don't exist the difference between the disciplines uh, between salt water and fresh water. You think there should be uh you think those should be separated? Yeah, yeah, these are completely different. Uh, my my principal training is in fresh water. Mm. Uh, maybe when uh, the separate is uh, official. Now in CMAS it's official. Maybe in one year or two years, my Objective and challenge is broke the world records in freeze water. Well, I wish you uh, luck with that. Yeah, man. Four weeks ago, I talked with uh, Carla Hanson about this, the president of AIDA, and she said uh, maybe it's a possibility. Well, I look forward to it. And what do you think about the uh, the possibility that free diving could be considered for the Olympics? Yes, but only the pool disciplines. O- only the pool disciplines are being considered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, well, um, I don't know why. The, the free diving is a very popular and very difficult. I don't know why it don't exist in the Olympic Games. I know it's, a, it's for money interest no <laughs> yeah i mean there's like some uh there's some crazy things that are in the olympics um i don't really understand um why they're there yes <laughs> i don't know why because the free diving may be born in greece <laughs> no yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so Alejandro, if uh, people want to find you on the internet, uh, where can they find you? What is your website address and your Facebook pages and things like this? The Facebook page is the same, like my name, Alejandro Lemus. My profile is the same, Alejandro Lemus. And my uh, uh, web page is... Uh, uh, www.alejandrolemus.org Right. So are you uh, going to the World Championships in Honduras um, this year? No. I take uh, holidays in Bali <laughs> in the same age. So uh, where where are you going in Bali? Are you going to uh, Bali Island or are you going to the Gili Islands? Are you going to do some free diving there or is it just purely for a holiday? I want to take a holiday and visit the area for free diving. And uh, I have a special treat for uh, very popular and very special place. Uh, I don't know. You, do you know? Um, special area and conservation area, Ryan Pat. Yeah, I'd love to visit there. I'm going to try and visit there uh, maybe next year. My plan is take many, many pictures in in Ryan Pat. Uh, obviously, just in free diving. Yeah. Well, I, I really look forward to seeing those pictures. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been really good talking with you. Um, I look forward to talking ag- again with you at some point in the future. Good luck with all your uh, your free diving. Good luck with your um, record attempts and uh, spreading the word about free diving in Mexico. And I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. 
and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. So that was Alejandro Lemus. I really love talking to Alejandro and I'm really excited to get over to Mexico one day and explore those cenotes. What did you think of the show? Let me know. Add me on Facebook if you want. My name is Donnie Mac, D-O-N-N-Y-M-A-C, and I'm here to answer questions and take suggestions for how to make the show better. Remember to subscribe to the show through your favorite podcast provider so you don't miss an episode and share the Free Dive Cafe with your friends. Until next time, dive safe.